Hello YouTube and welcome to another image editing tutorial on 0612 TV. Today, we're gonna cover an effect that I never really understood for the longest time. This one is called the miniature effect. So in today's video, we're gonna look primarily at two things. First, why this effect even works in the first place. And then second, we're gonna take a look at some post-production techniques that will help you achieve this effect. More on these after the break. This is 0612 TV. Welcome aboard. So alright, let's jump right into part 1. What is the miniature effect and why does it work? So instead of explaining things from scratch in words, take a look at this particular picture. Now you notice a couple of things. First of all, this picture was taken from a very high vantage point. Unfortunately, this is kinda a prerequisite to make this effect work. Another thing you'll notice about this picture is of course the depth of field blurring. In this particular case, this depth of field blurring was done in post-production, but of course if you have something cool like a tilt shift lens, you might be able to do it in camera. Obviously, if you have access to that, you should of course try to do it in camera. The effect just looks all the more convincing. But okay, let us step back and try to understand why this works. The idea is we want to try and make things in the scene look like they were actually miniatures. So you want to create the entire feel that these are actually toys on a board of some sort. And of course, that should explain to you why we need that particular top-down, at least high up kind of vantage point. For this particular shot, I was at the top of the Marina Bay Sands, which of course is those three towers and that little boat thing on top. I talked a little bit more about this particular location in a different vlog, so if you're interested, you can check out that vlog. In that particular vlog, I also showed you a little bit more of the environment up there, so I'm not going to repeat myself in this particular video. So okay, we understand one part of this effect. Why the depth of field blurring? You see, when you're trying to shoot miniatures, since they are pretty tiny, you're going to have to use some kind of macro mode. And when you go that close with macro, Chances are, you can't get everything in focus at the same time. Of course, it is possible to actually, you know, create a very deep depth of field, but most of the time, if you're taking pictures of miniatures, you probably want to keep the shallow depth of field kind of effect. So now that we kind of understand this effect, let us now attempt to replicate this using a normal camera and actual scenery and some photo editing magic. So what I've done is at that little viewing deck area at the top of the Marina Bay Sands, I went around, I tried to shoot as many photos as I can of, you know, just the entire city view. I paid particular attention to, you know, keeping the eye in the sky kind of angle, so mostly top down, slightly tilted kind of angle. Optimally, in your photos, you want to see the tops of things as much as possible. Having taken those photos, I went ahead and brought them into an image editing program. For me, I'm using GIMP. If you're using Photoshop, there may be a similar feature along the lines of what I'm going to cover. Unfortunately, since I don't have the experience, I will not be able to walk you through that. The feature I want to use to achieve this effect is called Focal Blur. You can actually use a normal Gaussian Blur for this, but the effects won't be as nice. I would certainly prefer if you use Focal Blur. It just gives things a little bit of additional realism. Unfortunately, for gym users, focal blur does not come with gym. However, if you head down to the video description, I actually have a link to the plugin. You can actually download it and install it in gym. So alright, now to actually get down to the effect, I bring my original image into gym and I crop it and scale it to a nice size. You actually want to do this first. You don't want to do the blurring, then crop. Because of course, running the blur filter on a full size image is going to take a lot of processing time. So I mean, if you're willing to wait, go ahead and do things that way. But I'm going to actually do my cropping and scaling first. So our next step is to create a new layer, select the gradient tool and set the gradient type to bilinear. Make sure you're doing a spread from black to white. What you want to do is you want to create a gradient that looks something like this. The part that you want to remain clear, that means the part that you want to be focusing on, should be indicated with the black color of the gradient. So basically, the brighter the color as shown by the gradient, the more blurring that's going to be. The darker the color, the less blurring that's going to be. 
So what we're going to do now is we're going to hide this new layer, select the original layer and go to filters, blur, focus blur. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to check this checkbox here and I'm going to select the gradient layer. So of course the plugin knows to use this information to actually help it with identifying what to blur and what not to blur. What I'm doing now is first I'm setting the bokeh type to concave. Then I'm increasing the blur radius by a little. I personally like the concave setting because it creates blur that looks like it is real lens blur. As for how much blurring is required, that really depends on how subtle or strong you want the effect to be. Feel free to experiment with these settings, obviously the blur radius will increase or decrease the amount of blurring in the image. You can also select the shape of the bokeh using any of the presets or the actual brush you have selected. And this is the result. Now things might not look perfect at the beginning, so what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to undo the effect, tweak your gradient and try again. It may take several tries to get things right, so do be patient. But you'll know when you get it right, because when you do get it right, you'll have that suspension of disbelief kind of feeling. A part of you just accepts that that looks like a miniature. And when you get that kind of feel, you've achieved the effect. Anyway, that's it. That's pretty much all there is for this episode. If you have any comments, queries, or suggestions, feel free to leave a comment in the comment section below. Don't forget to check out the official Twitter account for the channel at twitter.com slash 612 tv as always, I appreciate every like, favorite, and subscription you gave me. But until next time, you're watching 0612 TV.